In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Welcome, everyone, to Our Lady of Las Vegas Church, where today, on this 33rd Sunday of Ordinary Time, we gather together to celebrate the Eucharist. Since we are in the month of November, we continue our prayers for the souls of the faithful departed, all of the souls in purgatory, and so we offer this Mass on their behalf. So I ask you to please join with me as we pray in their intention. And so before we approach the altar, before we approach the Lord, let us be mindful of our sinfulness as we ask God now for his gracious mercy and forgiveness. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Malachi. Lo, the day is coming, blazing like an oven, when all the proud and all the evildoers will be stubble, and the day that is coming will set them on fire, leaving them neither root nor branch, says the Lord of hosts. But for you who fear my name, there will arise the sun of justice with its healing rays. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, you know how one must imitate us, for we did not act in a disorderly way among you, nor did we eat food received free from anyone. On the contrary, in toil and drudgery night and day, we worked so as not to be burdened any of you. Not that we do not have the right, rather, we wanted to present ourselves as models for you so that you might imitate us. In fact, when we were with you, we instructed you that if anyone was unwilling to work, neither should that one eat. We hear that some are conducting themselves among you in a disorderly way, by not keeping busy, but by minding the business of others. Such people we instruct and urge in the Lord Jesus Christ to work quietly and to eat their own food. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Because you're 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. While some people were speaking about how the temple was adorned with costly stones and votive offerings, Jesus said, All that you see here, the days will come where there will not be one left, a stone upon another stone that will not be thrown down. Then they asked him, Teacher, when will this happen? And what sign will there be when all these things are about to happen? And Jesus answered, See that you not be deceived, for many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time has come. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for such things must happen first, but it will not immediately be the end. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be powerful earthquakes, famines, and plagues from place to place, and awesome sights and mighty signs will come from the sky. But before all this happens, however, they will seize and persecute you. They will hand you over to the synagogues and to prisons, and they will have you led before kings and governors because of my name. It will lead to your living testimony. Remember, you are not to prepare your defense beforehand, for I myself shall give you a wisdom in speaking that all your adversaries will be powerless to resist or refute. You will even be handed over by parents, brothers, relatives, and friends, and they will put some of you to death and you will be hated by all because of my name. But not a hair of your, on your head will be destroyed. By your perseverance, you will secure your lives. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Today is the 33rd Sunday of ordinary time and what's uh, significant about that is it is the last counted ordinary time of the church year we started way back in january after the christmas season to number the ordinary times uh, after christmas when we started to wear the green uh, vestments and then we took a break for the lenten and easter season and then we started to count the ordinary uh, sundays way back in June when we started wearing green again. And here we are five months later with the 33rd and final Ordinary Sunday. Next Sunday already is the Feast of Christ the King, which is the, the last Sunday of the 2022 liturgical year. And in fact, in two weeks, we will already begin the new liturgical year and the first Sunday of Advent. How quickly time is flying by. So now as we approach the, the end of the, the church year, the church puts focus on the end times and the fact that the, the world as we know it is going to come to an end. It will. Jesus points out that in the gospel today. He tells the followers that this temple that they are admiring and, and looking at, so beautifully adorned and with costly stones and votive offerings, he says, all that you see here, the day will come when there will be not left one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. A very ominous uh, prediction. The words that Jesus spoke were actually a prophetic statement, though, about the Jews' beloved temple, which was about to be destroyed in the not-so-distant future. The temple, which took over 46 years to build, and it was a beautiful structure, but in fact, it was going to be destroyed by the Romans, and that would happen in the year 70 AD, leaving not one stone upon the other, as Jesus predicted. So Jesus' prophecy about the temple is historically true. It happened. 
But Jesus was not just talking about the destruction of the temple. He was also talking about the destruction and end of the world, which will come about one day. Just as we believe Christ is present here in, in this church, in the Blessed Sacrament, and, and that it is called the house of God, the Jews, well, they also believe that the temple was the dwelling place of God. The destruction of the temple, that was a, a great devastation for the Jews. Its destruction meant that God no longer would have a dwelling place on earth and that basically God was not going to be with them anymore. So the temple was all important for them. So we have to remember that the people of Jerusalem who built up and decorated the temple, they were also the same people that, that at the same time planned to destroy Jesus, the Son of God. They were able, it's interesting, they were able to, to, to know God in the adornments of the stone and the gold that, that, they made, made, that made up the temple, yet they couldn't recognize God in flesh and blood. When a temple becomes so superimposing that people are no longer to see God except inside it, then maybe it's time for its destruction because they've missed the boat. If they think God can dwell in rocks and stones, but that he can't dwell in a human person made in the image of God. Interesting. Our faith demands that we, we recognize the presence of God in the human person as well, and especially in the human person. St. Paul, he reminds us that uh, in, in his letter to the Corinthians that they are as sacred as the temple because their bodies, our bodies, are temples of the Holy Spirit. St. Paul says in his first letter to the Corinthians, do you not know that, our, that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you? Today's gospel challenges us to see and serve God both in the temple in which we gather, the church in which we gather for worship, and also in one another after our worship. We treat each other with respect and dignity because each person is made in the image of God and because God dwells in each person. Remember what Jesus told his disciples, whatever you do, even to the least of my brothers and sisters, you do that to me. Yeah, the destruction of the temple happened, and the destruction in the end of the world will also happen one day. But the presence of God, well, that will always be with us. God will always be with us. Remembering this truth and living it will also help us to remember that our lives, both in the church and out of the church, become one continuous act of service of the same God who dwells in our human soul as well as in the temple. And who will call us from this world one day to dwell with him for all eternity in his kingdom, which we call heaven. I'd like to share a little story um, before we continue. Um, it's a story about um, Sherlock Holmes and, and Dr. Watson. They, were, they went out camping, and um, after a good dinner and a bottle of wine, they were tired, and, and they went to sleep in their tent so a few hours later, Holmes, uh, Sherlock Holmes wakes up and he, he nudges his friend and he says, Watson, look up there and tell me what you see. And Watson rubs his eyes and looks up and he says, well, I see millions and millions of stars. Wow, it's beautiful. And Sherlock Holmes asks him, and what do you conclude from that? And Watson ponders for me and says, well, it tells me that there are millions of galaxies out there and there's potentially billions of planets and, and I suspect maybe even we'll have a beautiful day tomorrow. Anything else? Sherlock Holmes asks his friends. Well, I can see that God has given us a beautiful night. And so Watson asks his friend, Sherlock Holmes, so what do you, you see when you look up there? And Sherlock Holmes says to him, what do I see? What do I see? Watson, someone stole our tent. 
as simple as that. Please join with me now as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us man and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus taught his disciples that even when they are persecuted, not a hair on their heads will be destroyed. Trusting in God, who protects the threatened and consoles the suffering, we call to mind our needs and the needs of all the worlds as we present them now to the Lord. For the church, that we may be faithful to our mission to bring Christ to others as a sign of justice in times of persecution and hope in times of despair, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer because of poverty and famine, that they may reach out to them with generous hands. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who have lost hope, for those who fear what the future holds, that the promise of Christ's return may fill them with confidence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That as winter approaches, those who are homeless or who are unable to afford warm clothes or shelter may be protected from the debilitating cold. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered in this holy place, that by our sacrificial giving of time, talent, and treasure, we may help to prepare the worlds for Christ's return. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intention listed in our community book of prayer, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have gone before us in faith, that they may be brought into the peace of God's presence with all their sins forgiven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For the souls in purgatory from whom this Mass is offered and for all our personal intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. O God of justice and mercy, lead us safely through trials and tribulations as we worked to bring your reign to the whole world. Hear the prayers we offer to you today and grant them according to your holy will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Please pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and all of his holy church. Grant, O Lord, we pray that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We we'll lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state. And by his suffering he canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked for us the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we now acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and you are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and, giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ's death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. And humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George Leo Thomas, our Bishop, Gregory Gordon, our auxiliary bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Father, welcome them 
into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her beloved spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you, Father, throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Now, at our Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching together, let us pray. Our Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, thy thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our our trespasses, trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass trespass against us. us, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and power and the glory are yours now and forever. O Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Lord, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, for you live and reign forever and ever. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And And let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those called now to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth and charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you so much for being a part of our celebration on this 33rd Sunday of Ordinary Time. I thank all of our ministers, as always, who assisted at Mass today, Teresa for being our lector, Mikhail for manning our cameras, and for Eva and David for lifting us up so beautifully in music. As I mentioned, this is the last of the ordinary Sundays that, uh, for this year, anyway, that we'll be celebrating. Next Sunday is the last Sunday of the liturgical year, and it will be the Feast of Christ the King. And so we have a, a feast that is dedicated to celebrating Jesus Christ, who il truly is our universal King. So please join, I invite you to join us next Sunday for this great celebration. If anyone is celebrating a birthday or anniversary or something special going on in their lives uh, today or this week, as always, our best wishes to you. And as always, too, if you've got more serious things that are weighing heavy on your heart and soul, please know that our prayers go with you. So as we go forth, we walk with the Lord each day, filled with his grace and blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is now ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.